Hey, everybody, welcome back. It is your friend Anna with another dose of mojo to get your week started. And I just have to tell you, I'm laughing to myself because I was making notes and thinking about what I wanted to share with you on this episode. And I was like, oh, it's good. It's quiet right now. I'm at home to do this. And all of a sudden, I can hear all this stuff happening outside my my window and the house is making noises. And I don't think you can hear it, but in case you can, it doesn't matter because we're together. And what I have to talk about is much more important than the dog barking outside, right? So I want to share with you maybe 10 steps for self-care. And what I want to jump into is really what self-care is and what it's not. What we're not going to talk about is like a day at the spa or, you know, doing something like a long bath, because as much as I love both of those things, it is so much more than that. When we talk about self-care, I think we're talking about things that really put us first. And I guess, too, I want to make sure that we say right off the top, it is not to feel selfish because Self-care is essential to you being able to live a big life, run a big business, work as hard as you do, be there for everyone in your life, your family. And if you don't learn to put yourself first, if you don't get comfortable with putting yourself first, you're going to risk burning out. And when we look at self-care, I think we need to consider our physical health and being, our mental health and being, our emotional health and well-being, spiritual health and being, social health and well-being, and yes, our intellectual health and being too. So I'm excited to have this conversation with you because I, I think that we all can benefit from putting the focus back on ourselves and knowing that we have every right to put our energy into self-care. And I have a few ways you can do that. And the first one is this, if it feels wrong, don't do it. If it feels wrong, don't do it. Because your intuition is a guiding force in your life if you choose to understand it and listen to it. Yeah, we all have this amazing tool available to us. And intuition is basically this innate ability to know something, to know something deep within our body without even having to consciously think about it. You call it your gut feeling, right? When you just know something. And I know I have read about this a lot, and I'm sure there are numerous studies that have really proven that people who trust their intuition are more likely to do morally the right things and are likely to make better and quicker decisions. So if you really want to practice self-care, then if you know something is wrong, don't do it because your intuition is speaking to you. And if you know something is wrong for you, then you should be confident enough to say no or to walk away to anything or anyone that doesn't serve you. So that's my first one. My next step for self-care is to say exactly what you mean. Now, this one, is simple and yet it may not be easy, but it is important for us to, again, feel the confidence to feel our own power, to stand in our truth and to be able to say exactly what we mean without beating around the bush, without feeling like we have to protect someone else's feelings. Now, this doesn't mean that you go out of your way to be hurtful. It just means that you don't put someone else's need for comfort before yours. And if you really want to articulate something that is important or good for you, then you should be able to do that without feeling any sort of pushback or feeling that you have to ex over explain it or apologize it. 
So if you could be able to say exactly what you mean anytime that it comes up for you, how would that start to change things? How would that start to change the way you feel about things, about other people, about yourself for that matter? So when you're comfortable saying what you mean, it means that you're comfortable being in your authentic space. It, it just means that you are clear with what you want, with what you believe, with what you think, and that you're able to say that out loud to anyone else. And I think that people truly will see and recognize that you are being open and honest. And at the end of the day, I believe that people appreciate that. And you will attract more of the type of people you want really in your world. And I also believe we show people how to treat us. Okay, that's an important one too. We show people how to treat us. So if we're not going to say exactly what we mean, then we might be sending some mixed messages out there to people about how we want to be treated. Okay, so again, number two is to say what you mean, because if you speak your mind and you mean what you say, again, I think people will connect with you on a deeper level and you build trust. And that's really important in any relationship. Number three, we're talking about the 10 steps for self-care, a little different twist on self-care coming to you from your life coach right here, Anna Gibbs. Thank you for inviting me into your uh, car, your home, your mind today as we share these ways that we can really put ourselves first. And so number three, I speak from experience on this one, friends. And number three is don't be a people pleaser. <laughs> so I am what we call a high eye on the disc profile. I am definitely a very energetic, gregarious person, and I feed off of other people's energy. And I am very comfortable with people, love leading people, learning from people, coaching people. And I find a lot of value in coming from contribution, right? So that's one of the reasons why I do this podcast. I love being able to research and come up with topics that I think are relevant to my vision and passion for myself, which is help people live a bigger life. And so if I can share anything here that is helpful to you, that just makes my heart explode. And all of that has led over time for me to continue to search for ways to support you and make you happy and to ultimately please you. And that over time turned into feeling like I needed perhaps your approval or validation or acceptance in the process. And listen, I still am, I still find myself trapped in that a little bit and I recognize it and pull myself out of that as much as possible. But I think that even though I've done the work, to step out of being a people pleaser. I can talk very thoughtfully about it with you today. And many of you are struggling with this too. And you have to ask yourself, as we have to ask ourselves in any behavior we find ourselves really ingrained in, is why? And what is the purpose? And so if you find yourself really being a people pleaser, it's okay to ask yourself, why? What is that about? How does it serve you? What need does it fulfill for you? Now, look, I, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have a desire to make people happy. I'm talking about true people pleasing, which is where we put other people's needs before our own. And again, that is not being selfish. It is just putting ourselves First, it's being more self-aware and understanding that when we are really in a pattern of people pleasing, it's not about making the other person happy. A lot of times it has more to do with us looking for some sort of approval or acceptance or avoiding conflict, right? So I think that 
People pleasing can be misunderstood. People pleasing can be chalked up to being a good thing. But when that behavior has some downsides, then we've run the risk of, of feeling misunderstood, of feeling frustrated, of feeling even burnt out. And so I included this in my list of ways to promote self-care because I think it's a, another way that we're true to ourselves, right? When we stop being a people pleaser, it means that we are establishing healthy boundaries. It means that we are really looking at how to have healthy relationships that are more balanced and feeling more like a win. Instead of it being very one-sided where we tend to give and not really receive. And again, there's nothing inherently wrong with being nice or kind to someone else, right? It's a really valuable trait, honestly. What I'm talking about is when things get out of balance and where all of our energy goes into pleasing other people rather than focusing on providing ourselves with happiness. And if that continues, the people pleasing actually starts to work against us and creates feelings of low self-esteem or feeling like there might be a lot of expectations on you, feeling like you can't always cope when the stress gets high. And so I know someone's listening to this saying, oh my gosh, she's speaking to me. And I get you. I do. I understand you because I am a recovering people pleaser. And so I'm here to tell you that if you really want to put self-care as a priority, then this might be one of those things that you work on. Okay, in putting ourselves first and really getting comfortable with putting ourselves first and embracing self-care, I want to share number four on my list, which is never to speak bad about yourself. That's right. Never speak bad about yourself. Now, this isn't just saying it out loud. I'm not talking really about like self-deprecating humor, which is another thing that I think we should refrain from. But what I am talking about is how you think about yourself in your own mind. Yes. Listen, research has shown that our thoughts drive our emotions and our emotions drive our actions. So I'll say that again, your thoughts drive your emotions, your emotions drive your actions. So if we want to act in a way that will bring us the most success or happiness, then we have to understand how to control our emotions by learning to control our thoughts, which means that we have to examine what we're thinking or saying about ourselves. And we know this is self-talk. We talk to ourselves all day long. As a matter of fact, I talk to myself more than I talk to any other person on the planet. And if we want to really look at our self-talk, then we have to really be honest about how much of that is negative about ourselves. So what I'm saying is that we want to learn how to become aware to control our thinking so that when you find yourself in a situation where stress gets high or things aren't working out, or maybe you're feeling a little overwhelmed or anxious, right? That you don't immediately get into that conversation with yourself inside your own head, where you start to jump into all the things you do wrong and all the reasons why, and this is always my way. And why can't I, right? You could finish my sentences. And I understand this too may not be simple to reverse. However, if you really want to live a big life and you really want to pursue those dreams and goals that you have to know, and you have to be willing to support yourself and trust yourself and encourage yourself. And you have to find deep within yourself, the belief that you're enough, that you have all of the tools you need to be successful. Now, you might need more knowledge, you might need more experience, you might need more support, coaching, that's fine, but you have the tools. 
And I believe if you can dream the goal, if you can see the vision, you're halfway there. The challenge is that we don't want to believe that to be true. We want to minimize or diminish our own talent. We want to question if we have what it takes. We want to deny ourselves the destiny or the inheritance of this amazing gifts that we have, this dream that we have, which probably was divinely downloaded to you. That's something for another episode. Yet what I'm saying is it's time to start treating ourselves the way we want to treat other people. So never say anything about yourself to yourself that you don't want to come true. Never say anything about yourself to yourself that you wouldn't say to another person. Treat yourself as good, if not better, than you would treat anyone else. So we want to become aware of this negative self-talk. We want to stop it in the bud. We want to nip it in the bud. We want to stop it in its tracks. And we really want to examine how to reframe our thinking and it probably starts with how we see ourselves, what our beliefs are about ourselves and our emotions. And so if we could change the dialogue in our own head to be more empowering, we would be unstoppable. How are we doing, okay? Take a deep breath because I've got number five for you. Number five, never give up on your dreams. Never give up on your dreams. No matter how painful or difficult your journey might seem, never give up on your dreams. One day, you'll look back on everything you've been through and you'll probably thank God for it, the universe. I'm going to repeat that, sorry. One day, you'll look back on everything you've been through and thank God for it. Because all of your challenges, all of your hardships, all of your struggles, we're here to teach you something. And all of those lessons are here to shape what you do next. And that is invaluable information, invaluable education, and that helps you to do it differently or better the next time. So for that reason, you can't give up on your dreams because I know someone right now is struggling and feeling like maybe they're failing and it, it's just temporary. It really is. It's just temporary. And the other reason why you can never give up on your dreams is because life is unpredictable. Always remember that life is just unpredictable. You don't know when your next opportunity will show up. You don't know that you're at the end of the road because sometimes the road just takes another turn and you have to have faith. You have to have really, I think, a deep connection to those dreams, to those beliefs and have, you have to have faith that it's yours and it's yours to have. You just have to figure it out. And if you give up, you're surely going to lose. So you just have to hang in there and figure it out because you don't want to get to a point in your life where you have a lot of regret you just want to be able to say, I'm going to persevere. And yes, maybe I need some help and I'm going to ask or seek out that help, but I'm not going to give up. And I also believe we shouldn't give up because success is not determined by age either. There are thousands of stories of people who discovered something, started something, developed something at ages later in their life. So if you're feeling like, gosh, I've been at this for so long, that's okay. You just have to stick with it. You just have to know that your day is coming. And once you understand that, you'll start to see that there's great reward for pushing through and not giving up and allowing yourself to continue on that path and allowing yourself to continue to dream. Now, listen, it's not just about dreaming. It is about doing as well, because it starts with a vision, but then you do have to get into action because nothing changes until you do something. So I do want to say that as well, that in, in those moments where you're second guessing yourself or feeling like maybe you should give up on this dream or this goal that you have, 
it's important that you get real with yourself and really ask yourself, have I done everything within my power? Am I really following through on the things I say I'm going to do? Am I making the time? Am I taking the actions? Because if you have the ability to turn up the heat in those areas, then you've got your power and you've got the ability to get back on track and pursue your dreams. And again, just remember, challenges will come at you when you least expect them. They might even feel like they could tear you apart at times. But regardless of all that, the true sign of your character, of your ability to be resilient, is your ability to pick up the pieces and move on and keep going. Because that is what gets you to your dream. It's not when you sit down and give up in the middle of the path. So if you want to practice self-care, remind yourself that you've got to stand up and keep going. Don't be a part of the negativity that might be happening in your head and tell yourself that you have what it takes to go on. Don't give up. Okay, the next one, moving on to the next one. Don't be afraid to say no. <laughs> Don't be afraid to say no is a complete sentence. I think I did a podcast, it was actually a live on Mojo years ago through the Facebook page. Um, let me start this again, sorry. Okay, ready for the next one? Don't be afraid to say no. Don't be afraid to say no, because no is a complete sentence. So listen, this is about your boundaries again. This is about really being clear about your limitations, the time you have, protecting your space, protecting your spirit, protecting your energy, protecting your mindset. Sometimes we have to just say no. And I guarantee you, because we already talked about your intuition, you already know the things you need to say no to. This comes back to my people pleasing friends and you have to take a pause and ask yourself, does this serve me? Do I really want to do it? Is it necessary? Is it really what I should be putting my energy into? And if you can say no to yourself when you ask those questions, then say no out loud to the person or whatever it is that's asking of you. And here's why. Because when you say yes to something that you really don't want to, it's going to create feelings of resentment. And when you say yes to something, you're basically saying no to something else. The problem is that what you're saying no to inadvertently is more than likely something you want to do or you should be doing. So being comfortable with saying no, I understand for a lot of you, this could be really hard. But this is really about saying this is what's right for me. And when you say no to the other person, don't over explain it. Actually, you don't even need to explain it at all. Just say no. That's why I say to you, no is a complete sentence. Just say no, thank you. Maybe you want to say thanks for thinking of me, but the answer is no. And that's it. Stop talking. Because if you start to explain it, you're going to wind up talking yourself into doing it. You're going to say things like, listen, I would really love to, but... I'm just busy right now and I don't know if I really should and maybe I could maybe I can help you for a little bit right you see where it starts going so listen it's just no <laughs> be comfortable saying no especially when you know in your deep in your core that this is something you you really don't want to do just say no it's a complete sentence now the flip side another way to practice some self-care the next one on my list is that sometimes you just need to say yes now listen i'm not trying to contradict myself i'm not trying to confuse you what we're talking about is uh, i think a little bit about that intuition it's something called discernment it's your ability to distinguish between the things that are in alignment with what you want to do or not and also, when I say that you want to be comfortable saying yes, sometimes I'm encouraging you to take a chance. 
I'm encouraging you maybe to step out of your comfort zone. I'm encouraging you to see opportunity and to push back fear and stand outside of fear and have some faith and say yes. Because a lot of times the things we need to say yes to are life-changing opportunities. We might not see it at the moment, but when I look back on some of the things that I paused or thought twice about and realized that I finally just released the brakes, right? Released that parking brake that keeps you stuck. And I said, yes, it opened me up to a whole new path and it opened me up to new opportunities to try new things, learn new things about myself, develop some of my strengths, create bigger income possibilities, take on new projects, show up more as a leader, right? I could go on and on. And sometimes a little adventure was woven into it too. So take that risk, take that leap. Maybe you just need to say yes more often. If your friend says, hey, why don't we go on a vacation? Let's do a girl's trip. Why hesitate? Maybe you just need to say yes. If someone says, would you take a look at this project with me? Give yourself an opportunity to explore it. Now, again, you have to figure out what are those things that are outside of your goals, outside of your values, outside of your time that really don't line up with what you want to be doing, don't line up with your mission, vision, or values. And that may be where you have to practice saying no. But then there's probably a whole bunch of stuff that someone's talking to you about or providing you an opportunity to look at. And maybe you just have to say yes to those things. Because when you get this in balance and you start saying no to the stuff over here, you suddenly free up time and some emotional and mental space to say yes to the stuff over here. You have to figure that out. And I trust that you can. I trust that you can figure it out, practice discernment, know intuitively where you have to say no and intuitively to where you have to say yes. Because it's not the same for me as it is for you. So I really can't give you more of a roadmap than that other than having you really figure out how to know what's right for you and to trust your intuition. Okay, I have another one on the list. I, I don't even know what number this is, guys. Sorry, it's probably seven or eight. Um, here it is. Let go of what you can't control. Let go of what you can't control because you can't make a difference there. The only way you're able to make a difference, create an impact, create change, is by putting your energy and time to the things that are in your control, right? Now, what's not in your control? Okay, let me give you a couple easy ones first, right? Like the weather, not in your control. So you could choose to sit around and complain about it, but what is it going to bring you? So why bother? But if we look at that same framework, and apply it to other things that are, are outside of our control, we could see how we would be spending a lot of time on something that is never going to change or bring us the results that we seek. We can't control everything going on around us. I know some of us are control freaks. Yes, I'm with you. Yet, when you put your time and energy into the things you can't control, you create more frustration, which actually will negate what you're seeking and make you feel powerless. It will make you feel like you are so frustrated and so out of control by putting your energy into the things you can't control. It'll start to change the way things. And so when you shift your focus and your energy to the things within your control, you take back your personal power. It's like stepping back into the driver's seat of the car. You can't drive the car from the back seat. But if you're focusing on, on all the things you can't control, that's essentially what you're doing. And expecting that you have some kind of control over the car. Let's get back in the driver's seat and know that when we put our energy to the things we can control, that's where we can predict outcomes. And that's where we have the ability to make 
things transform and to change. So what are the things in your control? You can control the way you think. You can control the way you act. You can control the way you show up. You can control what you work on and how you work on it. You can control your goals, right? So you can control so many more things than that list of things that you can't control. So I want to encourage you to really become aware of where you're putting your energy and do you need to shift and do you need to shift more on those things that are within your control so you can get unstuck and move forward. As we wind down this list, I will say that I believe it's number nine is to stay away from negativity and drama. If you truly want to put yourself first and you want to practice self-care and you want to establish and really protect your boundaries and you want to really look at how to create a positive mindset and you want to really focus on the things that are within your control and you want to break through to that next level of achievement in any area of your life and you really want to start to live life in a bigger way then you must understand that you have to separate yourself out from negativity and drama because it will bring you down and you will, if you get stuck in that, you will start to change the way you think and feel and it's gonna change the way you show up. And it really is toxic at the end of the day. And I've said before on this podcast that complaining is a garbage magnet and it's true. Because when we start to complain and we start to share with ourselves first and with other people, all the things that we think are going wrong or what we don't like, it just grows. And it's all we see. We start to see only the negative it becomes a filter. And when we share that with other people, they start to line up to agree with us because it creates this magnetic force you find that people will start to complain or commiserate with you, agree with you. And then they'll start throwing their own problems on the pile and start telling you all the things that they're unhappy with and all the things they don't like. So remember, energy is attracted to like energy. So if you want to live a positive big life, you can't do that with a negative mindset. And if you want to protect and maintain a positive mindset, it's harder to do that when you surround yourself with negative people or negative situations, or you surround yourself with a lot of drama and negativity and gossip and things that really are just going to distract you from what you say you want to do. And, and I understand that some people that you love may be habitual negative thinkers, may be in this loop of drama and I'm not saying it's your job to fix them, but I am saying that it's your decision to choose how you separate yourself from that and choose how to live your life according to what you truly say you want, because you need the, you need your thoughts, beliefs, and actions all to be lined up and the environment in which you live in, work in, hang out in, think in is so important to you because it has to support what you say you want to accomplish. I understand that some of these people that you love that may be negative are they're people that you love. And, and I'm not asking you to cut anybody out of your life unless they're truly toxic. Um, but I will say that you might have to create some space and you're gonna have to learn how to limit your exposure to the drama and the negativity so that it doesn't bring you down with it. And then, the last thing I want to share with you for my list of ways to really step into self-care, these steps for self-care is love. It's to love yourself and love other people. Energy is everything in this world. And love is a great multiplier. Love is a beautiful energy. And I think that when we say we want to practice self-care, we have to know that practicing self-love has to come first. So you might be wondering, like, what does that really mean? What is, what is self-love? And I think self-love means that you have this appreciation for yourself, that you think of yourself 
in a very positive way. You have a high regard for who you are. And yes, is it closely related to self-esteem? Absolutely. Because when you have a strong sense of self-love, you understand your value. You treat yourself in a loving way. And this is such an important positive trait because loving yourself just means that you have a good understanding of your strengths and your weaknesses, that you're more tolerant of some of those weaknesses, and you're also comfortable using those strengths at a high level. I think that self-love starts with self-awareness, and it's important because, look, when you love yourself, you tend to be more open and you tend to be more willing to take chances, to take action, to connect with new opportunities. You tend to be less critical in your thinking. You tend to be less negative in your self-talk because your self-love is inspiring you to take care of yourself. It's inspiring you to advocate for yourself. It's inspiring you to strive for success. And I think that this is so important because some benefits that can come from self-love could just be lower stress, higher resilience, having an ability to bounce back when challenges show up. And I think that it just leads to feeling more compassion. Yes, for ourselves, which means that we'll understand how to be more empathetic and compassionate to other people. And I think practicing self-love means that we're telling ourselves that we're enough and that we have this sense of belonging. It creates deeper connections with our, ourselves and other people because we feel good about who we are and we're not afraid to put it out there and we're not going to make excuses for the good or the bad or anything in between. And we just accept ourselves for who we are. And I really believe when you are able to go through that process for yourself, you'll be able to do it for other people. And that whole, this whole concept of self-love, maybe I should have started with it on this list, but I think it leads to so many of the other things we're talking about. You tend to understand how to say no to some things and say yes to others. You understand what it means to set boundaries. You understand what it means to push yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone. You trust yourself more. So you listen to your intuition a little bit more often you're not focused on being perfect either. When you are really aware of who you are and you're practicing self-love, as I said, you're accepting all of it, the whole package. So remember, this is not about perfectionism. This is just about acceptance and knowing that we're just beautifully made and probably beautifully imperfect all at the same time. And it becomes much easier to say no to overcommitting and overextending and stepping out of our boundaries when we're really standing in self-love. And we are probably seeking less external validation and approval because we're finding that validation coming from within. Because I don't need someone else to tell me who I am. I know who I am and I like who I am and I accept who I am. So when you're really connected to and willing to practice self-love and develop this more, you're on a journey to knowing yourself. You're on a journey to understanding yourself. You're on a journey to, you know, take care of yourself in many ways. And practicing that self-compassion means that you are nurturing more of your positive self-talk and really allowing yourself to grow and, and at the end of it, embrace just who you are. Embrace your uniqueness, celebrate your individuality. That's a powerful way to practice self-love, right? In a world that is chaotic and everyone is trying to, I think, figure out how to be like something or someone they see sometimes on social media or in a movie, we just have to be able to stand in our uniqueness and be okay with that and really express our own authenticity. I had to put this on the list, self-love. So yes, love yourself and be kind to yourself. 
practice gratitude around yourself, practice gratitude around your body, around your flaws, around your skills, your gifts, your passions, your intellect, really just embrace all of it and know that you are an unrepeatable miracle. These are my tips to help you practice self-care. I believe that it is a great gift to give yourself, to love yourself and have more compassion for yourself by putting yourself first. So I love you and I'm excited that I was able to share this with you and I will see you next week and put yourself first today. Figure out a way to do that because it's important. You matter.